Hello everyone, my name is Brant Kudrowski and this organic chemistry video is going to cover SN2 reaction problem solving, how to do predict the products type questions. The first example of a problem we'll take a look at is this one where we're given an alkyl halide, a nucleophile, and we're asked to draw the SN2 reaction products. First thing to do is to look at the alkyl halide and identify it as primary, secondary, or tertiary. This is a secondary alkyl halide, which means it's a somewhat marginal substrate for SN2 substitution reaction. However, since we're asked to draw the SN2 substitution products, we'll do it. It's just the yield for this reaction might not be great. First thing I'll do here is point out the polarization of the carbon-halogen bond, which is shown here. That carbon is partially positive and the chlorine is partially negative. The nucleophile species here is sodium hydroxide, and I'm going to draw that in a more of a Lewis structure type representation where you can see the oxygen is the nucleophilic atom. It's going to have electron pair on this atom attacking the partially positive carbon of the alkyl halide. And so that's what happens next. Nucleophile attacks the carbon and the leaving group leaves. And since the SN2 reaction is one that goes with inversion of configuration, the nucleophile here has to approach the leaving group from the back side. So since chlorine is on a wedged bond, it's pointing up out of the plane of the screen, the nucleophile has to come in from the opposite face. So it has to come in from behind. So it has to come in with a dashed bond orientation. So when we draw the nucleophile in the product here attached to that carbon, it's gonna be with a dashed bond orientation. In the process of the reaction, this H is going to get bent up into a wedge position. So that's what you'll see in terms of the inversion of configuration. So this is what the product would look like. Here we've got the nucleophile has come in from the face opposite of where the leaving group left from, and the hydrogen, which was before on a dash, is now on a wedge. This is an inversion of configuration type product, and the other product is the salt, sodium chloride. Here's another example of a SN2 substitution reaction with a secondary alkyl halide. So as before, I'll point out the polarization of the carbon-halogen bond. Then we'll want to take a look at what kind of nucleophile we're dealing with here. This is sodium cyanide. The Lewis structure of sodium cyanide is sodium plus, and there's a carbon-nitrogen triple bond with lone pairs on both carbon and nitrogen. So since carbon is a much stronger nucleophile than the nitrogen here, which is neutral, this is the pair of electrons that's going to be attacking the partially positive carbon. And that's what happens in the next step. The leaving group then leaves and this is inversion of configuration. So you'll have to imagine that the nucleophile comes in from the back face here and as it does the methyl group here gets bent in this direction. The hydrogen gets bent in that direction and that's what inversion of configuration is going to look like. Our nucleophile delivered from that face and these groups bending to get out of the way of the approaching nucleophile. So this is also an inversion of configuration type product. And the co-product here is sodium bromide. Here's another example. This one happens to be in a ring. So there's an alkyl iodide and our nucleophile is sodium methoxide. I'll point out where the partial positives and negatives are. I'll draw the structure of the nucleophile, the Lewis structure of the nucleophile. The nucleophilic atom here will be the oxygen. One of these lone pairs of electrons on oxygen will be doing the attacking on the partially positive carbon. And that's what happens next. And approaches opposite of the face that the leaving group leaves from. So here we've got leaving group on a wedged bond. So the nucleophile is gonna come in with a dash bond orientation. In the product then, when the OCH3 is added as bonded to that carbon, it's gonna be with a dash. like this. That's an inversion of configuration product and the co-product is going to be sodium iodide. Here's another example of an SN2 substitution reaction of an alkyl chloride and the nucleophile in this case is ethoxide. Polarization of the carbon-halogen bond is as described with the partially positive carbon being the point at which the nucleophile is going to attack. The nucleophile has a nucleophilic atom, that's oxygen. Oxygen has three lone pairs on it and a negative charge. One of those lone pairs will be what attacks the partially positive carbon and displaces the chlorine leaving group. And now the product is going to be one where the ethoxy group is attached to that carbon, but since the leaving group is on a wedge bond and it's inversion of configuration, the ethoxy substituent is going to be attached to the carbon with a dash bond orientation. And this Hydrogen here, which is a dash bond, is going to be a wedge in the product. That's inversion of configuration, and it looks like this. 
Notice that when this reaction happened, that there's another stereogenic center here, the one over here, that one doesn't react. So you have to be really careful when you're doing SN2 substitution reactions and realize that inversion of configuration only happens at the stereogenic center that's being attacked by the nucleophile. Not every stereogenic center in the molecule inverts, just the one that's reacting. This is an inversion at the reacting carbon. And the other product here is chloride. Here's an example of a reaction with an alkyl halide where there are two halogens and we need to figure out which one of these is going to react. First thing you'll want to do is look at the alkyl halide and scrutinize every point to see whether it's a primary, secondary, or tertiary alkyl halide. So we've got a point here where there's an alkyl halide and a point here. Well, this one is a tertiary alkyl halide, and those un don't undergo SN2 substitution reaction, so there's going to be no reaction here. This is a primary alkyl halide. That's a good one for an SN2 substitution reaction. So I'll put the partial positive, partial negative indicators on that bond and draw on the lone pair of electrons on the nucleophile that's going to be doing the attacking. It comes in from the backside, attacks carbon, displaces the bromide leaving group, and the product is the following alkyne. Here, the new bond that formed is right here between the nucleophilic atom, which was that carbon, and that carbon which used to have the halogen attached. And then sodium bromide is the coproduct. Here's another example that has a relatively simple primary alkyl halide, but the nucleophile has actually two different atoms that we're going to have to figure out which one of those is going to react. So I'll draw in the partial positive, partial negative polarizations on the alkyl halide species, and then point out that this nucleophile has potentially two nucleophilic atoms. And when you look at these two atoms, comparing them nitrogen versus oxygen, oxygen's more electronegative. It's more to the right in the periodic table. Nitrogen is more to the left. So nitrogen is a more nucleophilic atom. It's more basic. It's less electronegative. So one way you could think about this is it holds on to its electrons less tightly. It shares more readily. This is one of the periodic trends in nucleophilicity that was covered in a previous video. So if this is unfamiliar, you might want to go back and take a look at one of those previous videos. Nucleophile comes in, attacks the alkyl halide carbon, leaving group leaves, and the product here is one where the nitrogen has become bonded to the alkyl halide carbon. Nitrogen still has two hydrogens attached and it gets a full formal positive charge, and then Cl- is the counter ion for that species.